Well, I grew up in Wichita, Kansas, and their capital of the world, so I saw a lot of airplanes, and I was interested in them from the time I was five years old. They got my first airplane ride in a staggered wing beach. I was either seven or eight, and boy, immediately I knew what I wanted to uh, do in life, and that was be a pilot. It was uh, looking down, it, was, uh, it looked so clean and so neat, the world. And so I started flying uh, at 12 years old, and I was working at the airport on weekends in the summer. Uh, I'd get flying time for my pay. And uh, it really worked out uh, to be a good thing. By the time I was 18, well, 19, I had 1,500 hours. And I was hired by United Airlines uh, as a co-pilot on DC-3s. That was in January 1952. And I uh, flew for United for 40 years and seven months, retired seniority number one. And I went to pilot training with the Air Force, took leave from United, military leave. I uh, went in the Air Force in January of 54 and was in 20 months. I uh, came back, I uh, graduated as a fighter pilot flying F-86 Sabre jets which the guard had by the time I got back. I have uh, about 53,000 hours and I used to do a lot of flying. I used to fly 120 hours or more a month with United and with aircraft sales and all the other things I did. And I still fly 25 to 30 hours a month. More than half of it I, uh, it was non-airline flying and uh, was other things I've done and uh, so I do have a lot of flying time. There could be somebody with more but I don't know who it is. Well the jet races that are going on now are real interesting. Um, and uh, there's a, quite a few of these small jets around jet trainers like L-39s, L-29s, and uh, uh, they're reliable, the engines are reliable compared to Merlins and things, and uh, they're going real fast, and I, uh, at first I didn't think too much uh, about it, but now they're putting on a good show, I think, a, a very good show, and um, I think that's a welcome addition to the racing in Reno. Well, I've always wanted to uh, do an air show act with a Learjet because it is like a little fighter airplane. It's so maneuverable. I just kind of thought it'd be fun uh, to do because people aren't used to seeing a, an executive jet rolling around upside down and things. And uh, the airplane's strictly a, a standard stock airplane, with the exception that we put the smoke on it and put a 50-gallon tank in the baggage compartment. But that's the only thing. They did static tests on it in Wichita. They went to 14 G's without taking a set. So I'm not worried about anything I do with it. I, I don't uh, pull over about three G's normally. And, but it's just a great little plane. It is like a little fighter plane. It does exactly what you want it to do. All right, two things happening. Clay Lacey's jet out in front of us. He is the next performer as we recover all of our unlimiteds. Folks, with the exception of a smoke system, there are no other modifications on the airplane. Even though it's 45 years old, you'll see the great versatility of the aircraft. Clay Lacey flew in the races from the first year, 1964, right through every year until 1972. He had a purple P-51. It was race number 64 called Miss Van Nuys. Van Nuys Airport was where Clay Lacey jets were headquartered. Yeah, so Clay won in 1970. He got the checker pylon, first of the fastest class in that Miss Van Nuys. Now they're gonna take the stock, with the exception of the smoke system, do a reversal, come back in and execute a roll. And remember, 
that Bill Laird got his idea for this executive jet by looking at a Swiss fighter. And he converted that fighter into this initially small executive passenger aircraft. Jason Soames in the right seat, Captain Clay Lacey in the left seat. Up goes the nose. And a brisk slow roll. Now as they do a little wing over turnaround, they'll be coming back in. They promised me to roll the aircraft to the inverted flight position, which means they will do an extra yank on both the shoulder harnesses and the lap belts so their heads don't hit the top of the cockpit area. They'll cinch in real tight. They will take a deep, deep breath and then tighten those bells even more, first one, then the other. They make their way around. They'll be hanging by the belts on the next pass. Clay and Jason, roll that airplane upside down and hold it there for me. And a roll back to the right side up position. Now making their way again around in that elongated crop duster turnaround. They'll be coming back in and sectioning off a roll. It'll be the four point hesitation roll with a hesitation every 90 degrees of rotation. There's the section roll, holds it upside down, back to knife edge flight, and completes it right side up. For our men and women in the armed forces, Clay Lacey, Jason Soames in the victory roll. Now after the turnaround, they'll be coming back in. They'll be setting up for the climbing barrel roll, spiral. The reason that they call it a barrel roll, they tried to tell the young students now, just remember, just think like there's a 55 gallon drum out here, a big one laying sideways, and you need to roll around that drum. So that means you've got you've to roll over the top of the drum that's laying on its side. And you also have to curve your flight around the diameter, the circular diameter of the drum. Thereby the student got a better picture of what he was expected to do. Play Lacey and Jason Soames in the climbing barrel roll spiral. Clay Lacey, Jason Soames in the photo pass. There it is, as promised, smoke on. Still after all these years, still a gorgeous jet. All right, uh, cleared for landing is Clay Lacey. Gears down, no problem. Oh, three quarter of a mile final, probably at the most. Speed's right, altitude's right. Right on profile, right on speed, nimble. But corporate pilots, if you want to keep your job, don't try this with a boss.